Happy New Year. My name is Craig Beckman. I'm the CEO of Aquamembranes, a water technology startup in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We were recently connected with a clean tech investment fund focusing on climate change. At first, the fund did not feel we were a good fit, since our technology improves productivity and lowers cost. But they were quickly convinced after we demonstrated the immense energy required to treat and move water and therefore the connection between climate change and water treatment. To understand this connection, it's important to understand two key facts. One obvious, one not so obvious. First, water is very, very heavy. Something you already know if you've ever carried a five gallon bucket. Second, water is the world's best solvent. This means water always wants to absorb and dissolve more and more material into itself, salt, metals, organics, etc. And once the solids are dissolved in the water, they're very difficult to remove. So is there really potential to lower CO2 emissions through better water treatment? Yes, absolutely. I see two solutions in play here. The first is decentralizing water treatment. This is key because there's a vast amount of energy required to move water, and it often goes unaccounted for. We often hear the statistic about the amount of water used to make different products. Let's start with my favorite meal, a hamburger. If you Google how much water is required to make a hamburger, the answer would be something like 660 gallons. But in actuality, the 660 gallons of water did not disappear in the process, it was only used temporarily. Yes, the cow drinks a lot of water, but it all comes out again. Generally, you can think of water as rented, not owned. So, a really a better metric for how much water goes into making a hamburger is how much energy is used to get the water to and from each process required to make my favorite food. So if we focus on the best way to reduce energy used to move the water, the solution is to move the water shorter distances. To put this in other terms, the city of Chicago uses about 1 billion gallons a day of water. The energy required to pull this water from Lake Michigan, use it, and eventually put it back in the, into the Des Plaines River is about 40 megawatts per day. Reducing this volume, and more importantly, the distance traveled will have a positive effect on the energy usage and therefore emissions. Ultimately, these two examples lead us to the same solution, which is the importance of decentralized water treatment and water reuse. The second solution to affect climate change is improving desalinization technology. I referred earlier to the solvency of water and how difficult it is to remove solids from water once they're in it. In much of the world, seawater is the only option to meet drinking water demands. Seawater is an example of this solvency. Estimates put the total volume at 25 billion gallons per day. And the amount of energy required to remove salt from that much seawater is 25 gigawatts. Depending on production, this would produce almost 18,000 metric tons of CO2 every day. This is the same output as 1.4 million cars. Therefore, technologies which reduce the energy required to desalt seawater can also have a meaningful improvement in the total emissions. So as you can see, there is a greater connection between emissions, CO2 reduction, and water treatment than the average person probably understands. The future of water treatment could benefit from addressing these solutions to help combat the emissions crisis in the world. Thanks for watching. And as always, I welcome your comments and contributions to the conversation.